Hey everyone. So yesterday we dealt with the beginning of solving quadratic equations. Okay. Yesterday's lesson was on graphing. Um, and the way we solved by graphing was we would graph the parabola and either we could calculate the roots uh, or the x-intercepts on our graphing calculator. On a Casio, you just went G-self root. On a TI, what we did was we went y2 equals zero and then solve for the intersection point. And the conversation around y2 equaling zero and solving for the intersection point also kind of led to a conversation where really if I had like 3x squared minus 6x equals 2, um, I could just stick that in y1 and stick the, so stick the left side in y1 and stick the right side in y2, and I could solve the points of intersection that way as well. Okay, so you can bring everything over to one side and have it equal zero and solve for the x-intercepts, or you can take the left, put it in y1, the right, put it in y2, and solve the intersection points that way. Okay, um, okay, so today we're going to shift. We're still going to do the same thing, except we're going to start doing it algebraically. So today is all about factoring. Um, if you are a factoring machine, like I want you to be, um, today should be fairly easy, okay? There's one very simple but profound um, conversation we have to have, and then the rest will be fine as long as you can factor. If you're struggling with factoring, uh, this will be a great refresher for you to, um, and a reminder, I guess, for you to go and review factoring and make sure you are okay with that, okay? So make sure if you're struggling with some of the things I do here, go look up some past videos I've done on factoring, um, either in 20-1 review material or in 10C material, and make sure you get super comfortable with factoring, okay? Factoring makes the world go round. Um, maybe not, but it definitely makes 20-1 go round, okay? Factoring is a huge part of 20-1. So you want to be extremely comfortable being able to factor, okay? All right, so... To start with, we're gonna kind of use a couple of equations uh, as a review of yesterday, and then we'll take these equations and um, start doing our algebraic process with them. So using what you know from yesterday, solve the following graphically. The first one is zero equals x squared plus two x minus 15. Go ahead and uh, pause me, get a graph and get the solutions. This is what your graph should have looked like. And then your solution should have been x equals negative five and three, okay? So have that ready to go. We're gonna compare that uh, with some other answers in a second. Next guy I want you to try is six X squared minus four X equals zero. Again, we're gonna graph and solve using our graphing technology. Go ahead and pause me, get a good picture. Okay, here is that lovely picture and you should have gotten solutions there of X equals zero and X equals two over three. And then the last one, 4x squared minus 9 equals 0. Go ahead, shut me up for a minute. Your picture should have looked like this. And then your solutions to that would have been plus or minus 3 over 2. Okay, uh, plus or minus 3 over 2. Great. Now, we've got that as a basis. Now we're going to dive into looking at these same three equations, but we're going to start looking at them uh, solving algebraically. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to factor them. So if I'm looking at x squared plus 2x minus 15, I need uh, two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 15 and add together to give me 2. And you would be comfortable to say, hopefully, that that is plus 5 and negative 3. So that factors into x plus 5 and x minus 3. Now, remember, it said 0 equals up here, so it still says 0 equals here. And now, some of you might be saying, okay, well, what do I do with this? Well, here's where the profound conversation is about to happen, okay? Um, this may sound really silly, but it's so important that you understand this concept or else nothing else works, okay? And the concept is called the zero product principle. The zero product principle states this, if A times B equals zero, then A equals zero or B equals zero. In other words, if I'm multiplying two numbers together and my answer is zero, one of those numbers is zero, okay? Because then zero times anything is just zero, okay? Now, 
Why is that important here? It's important here because that means this is two numbers being multiplied together, right? Here's one guy being multiplied by the other guy. So if those two guys being multiplied together equals zero, one of them has to equal zero. And so what happens is I can split this statement up into two smaller statements now. I can say either x plus 5 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. And then I can solve for each one of those. Okay, so I'm going to break this up into two different statements. I'm using the zero product principle here. So it says 0 equals x plus 5. Either this guy is my 0 or 0 equals x minus 3. This guy is my 0. Either one of them are true, which means I'm going to have two possibilities for answers here, okay? Well, if 0 equals x plus 5, I just have to bring my 5 over and x would equal negative 5. If 0 equals x minus 3, I have to add 3 to both sides to get x by itself, x would equal 3. So algebraically, I've determined that my answers are x equals negative 5 and x equals 3. This was the first example I asked you to graph. Let's go look at the graph again. Oh, look we had x equals negative 5 and x equals 3 from the graph, okay? So algebraically, we've now figured out the same thing that we did yesterday using technology, okay? Let's look at the next one. I've got 6x squared minus 4x equals 0. If I want to factor that, uh, this is not a trinomial, but I can take a greatest common factor out. The greatest common factor would be 2x. So if I took out the 2x, I'd have 0 equals 2x, and what I'd be left with in brackets is 3x minus 2. Okay, um, so here's the zero product principle. It's 2x times 3x minus 2. If a times b equals 0, either a or b have to give me 0. So I say either 0 comes from my 2x or 0 comes from my 3x minus 2. And I just solve each of those. If 0 comes from my 2x, divide both sides by 2, x has to be 0. On the other side, if 0 comes from my 3x minus 2, uh, I'll add 2 and divide by 3, so x would equal 2 over 3. So my two answers here would be 0 and 2 over 3. Go compare the graph that you did on the top of that page. You got the exact same thing. x was 0 and 2 over 3. Okay? And then the last one was 4x squared minus 9. If I want to factor that, I want you to notice that that's a difference of squares. So that would factor into 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. So I have 0 equals 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. Those are two binomials being multiplied together to equal 0. One of those binomials have to equal 0. So I split myself up. I'm using the zero product principle. I split myself up into two smaller statements. 0 is 2x minus 3, or 0 is 2x plus 3. And now I solve for each of those. Uh, for the 0 equals 2x minus 3, I'm going to add 3 to both sides and divide by 2. So that's going to give me positive 3 over 2. For the 0 equals 2x plus 3, I'll have to subtract 3 from both sides and then divide by 2, and that'll give me the negative 3 over 2. Okay, so I got x equals plus or minus 3 over 2. If you look at the thing you did with the graph, you got the exact same thing, x equals plus or minus 3 over 2, okay? So factoring, as long as it equals 0, this doesn't work. Please, please, please listen to this statement. This does not work unless it equals 0, okay? Otherwise, you can't use the zero product principle, right? So super important that before you start factoring, everything's on one side and it equals zero, okay? Okay, so what did we just learn? One way to solve a quadratic equation is to factor and then use the zero product principle. If one side of the equation is equal to zero, then we know our two factors must multiply to zero. So make sure that one, of your, one side of your equation is always equal to, are you catching the common theme here? It has to be zero or it's not going to work, okay? All right, so let's try a few things here. <clears throat> Solve algebraically. Now, I am going to factor this. Uh, I'm going to do it through decomposition. 
if you factor by inspection or if you factor by cross product method or however you factor, it doesn't matter to me as long as you can factor and get the correct answer, okay? I will quickly walk you through uh, decomposition here. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 24 and add together to give me negative eight. That would be negative, I'm sorry, <laughs> I was thinking about the answer. Um, add together to give me negative five, sorry. That would be negative eight and positive three. So I split my negative five X into negative eight X and positive three X. Factor the front two. So 2x squared minus 8x, I can take out a 2x and I'd be left with x minus 4. Back to the back two, I can take out a 3 and I'd be left with x minus 4. So now I see that x minus 4 is common, so I'm going to pull the x minus 4 to the front. x minus 4 times 2x plus 3 equals 0. Oh look, I have two binomials being multiplied together to be 0. That's the zero product principle. One of those binomials have to give me the 0. So either x minus 4 equals 0 or 2x plus 3 equals 0. If x minus 4 equals 0, x equals 4. And if 2x plus 3 equals 0, x equals negative 3 over 2. Okay. Now, when I'm doing solutions like this and there's more than one solution, we often write it in set notation brackets. Okay. So we would conclude like this. Therefore, x equals the set of these solutions, essentially. So it's 3 over 2, comma, and 4. Okay. Awesome. All right. Let's get a little messier. There's beauty in the mess when it comes to math. Uh, determine the roots of x plus 4 times x minus 3 plus x minus 2 all squared equals negative 3. Now, you are not ready to factor anything here yet. You got to do some tidying up. So we need to multiply these guys together. So first outside, inside, last, right? Um, we need to square this. Well, we've been doing that a lot with quadratics. So square the first double product, square the last. And then we're also going to need to bring that negative three over. We'll have to add three to both sides so that I have zero on one side because I can't factor until it equals zero. I should rephrase that. That's why I hesitated that statement. I can always factor. It's just not going to do me any good if it doesn't equal zero, right? because the whole point of the solution, the solution comes from the zero product principle, okay? Okay, so I've got x times x, x times negative three, four times x, and four times negative three. I'm gonna square the first double the product, square the last. Um, I don't have my mouse on, just give me a second. Okay, so squaring the first, doubling the product, square the last, that gives me x squared minus four x plus four. Now, I've got x squared and x squared, so that'll be 2x squared. Uh, my four x's here actually add to zero, so I'm just going to ignore them. I've got negative 3x, then I've got negative 12 plus 4, so that's negative 8, but then I'm going to add another 3 to that, so that'll be five, negative 5. So I've got 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 equals zero when I simplify everything up. Looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 10, add together to give me negative three. So that was negative five and two. So I've decomposed. Again, I'm just walking you through decomposition. If you do another way, that is totally, totally okay. Um, I broke my negative three X down into my two friendly terms, which is negative five X and two X. Now I'll factor the front two, factor the back two. Out of the front two, I can take out an X and I'd be left with two uh, X minus five. Out of the back two, um, I just take out a 1 and I'm left with 2x minus 5. So now I can see that the 2x minus 5 is a common factor. Pull it to the front. I've got 2x minus 5 times x plus 1 equals 0. Because it equals 0, I can use the zero product principle. So either 2x minus 5 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. If 2x minus 5 equals 0, then x equals 5 over 2. I'm just adding 5 to both sides and then dividing by 2. And if x plus 1 equals 0, x will equal negative 1. And I write my solution sets. Okay? See, so you totally got this. All right. Oh, this is a fun one. Uh, if negative 6 is a root of 2x squared plus kx minus 30 equals 0. Sorry, there's a little typo there. Uh, determine k. Okay, so... If negative six is a root, that means when I got to my final answer, one of them said x equals negative six. 
Well, if x equals negative six, let's reverse engineer this. What would the factor have been? The factor would have been x plus six, okay? So I know I have x plus six and another binomial that when I multiply it together, I'm gonna have to get something that looks like this, okay? So I've got x plus six, and then I've got two x plus eight. Now I knew I needed a two x here because that's the only way to get a two x squared. Okay, and I don't know what this guy is yet, so I've just called him A. But I know it's gonna have to equal this two x squared plus kx minus 30. All right, so now I'm just using some logic. I know that six times A is gonna have to give me that negative 30, okay? So that tells me A is gonna have to be negative five, okay? So now that I know that A is negative five, I can figure out what K is, okay? Because K, take a look at this for a second, K is going to be the result of my outside terms and my inside terms added together, right? So if I was to do all this multiplication out, I'd get a negative 5x and I'd get a 12x. And when I add those together, 12x and negative 5x gives me 7x. So K has to be 7. Okay, but I will keep going through this process for a second with you. So I multiply that out and then I combine like terms. And now I see, oh, look, this is 7K. This is, sorry, this is 7X. This is KX. Uh, so K has to be seven. Okay, so I can conclude, therefore K equals seven. Okay. All right. Write a quadratic equation with in integral coefficients whose roots are negative one fourth and three. We should talk about what integral or integral coefficients mean. Integral coefficients refer to the coefficients having to be integers, okay? Super important. That means you can't just say like, x plus a quarter here, that's not a proper factor, okay? So this is very similar to the last question in the sense that we're starting with our answers. Um, I know that x equals negative one quarter and I know that x equals three. So if x equals negative one quarter and I wanna get that into a factor that would have equaled zero, um, I'd multiply both sides by four and add one. So that's four x plus one equals zero. There's a factor that's part of my equation. Do the same thing for three. So if x equals three, bring that over so it equals zero and my factor would have been x minus three equals zero. So these guys are my two factors for the quadratic because these guys would have been what I split for the zero product principle. So I just put them back together and I multiply them, okay? So my quadratic ends up being four x plus one times x minus three and then I just multiply that out. Okay, so that ends up being 4x squared minus 11x minus 3. Now, I added the middle terms already, so just for clarification, that was my negative 12x and my positive 1x. That's where I got that negative 11x, okay? All right, good job. <clears throat> Two consecutive integers have a sum of their squares equal to 113. Determine the two numbers. Now, consecutive means one right after the other. So consecutive after 10 is 11. But what I need you to think about there is mathematically, how did I do that? How do I go from 10 to 11? Well, I had to add one to 10. So if I want consecutive integers, I can call my first integer x, and then consecutive after x, I'd have to add one to it. So that would be x plus one. And I'm looking for the sum of their squares. So that means I'm looking at x squared, and x plus one all squared. Okay, so my equation is x squared plus x plus one all squared equals 113. Now, I'm gonna need to multiply this guy out and then combine like terms, bring everything over to one side so that it equals zero, and then I can start thinking about factoring. So for the binomial, when I square him, square the first delta product, square the last, so that'll give me x squared plus two x plus one. I got another x squared at the front, so that'll be 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then I'll bring my 
113 over, so I'll subtract 113 from both sides. So that'll give me 2x squared uh, plus 2x minus 112, if I did all that in my head correctly. Yes, okay, good. Now I want to divide everything by 2. So that's going to give me x squared plus x minus 56 equals 0. And now I'm ready to factor, okay? Um, by the way, just a little word of uh, knowledge here, because I may have confused some of you. Some of you may look to that and said, how come I didn't factor the 2 out? The difference here is I divided everything by 2 because I'm allowed to work on both sides of the equation. So why not get rid of it by dividing every term by 2? On the other side, I would have gone 0 divided by 2, and that's just 0. Okay. All right. So I'm looking at x squared plus x minus 56, and I need to factor it. So that I'm two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 56 and add together to give me one. So that would be eight and negative seven. So I've got x plus eight and x minus seven. That's now the zero product principle that you're all coming to know and love dearly. Um, so x plus eight equals zero and x equals negative eight. Or x minus seven equals zero and x equals positive seven. Okay. Now, some of you may look at that and say, whoa, we screwed that up because those aren't consecutive numbers. They're not supposed to be. These are, or these represent, the two starting values of x. They're not supposed to be consecutive. There's actually two, um, <laughs> there's two sets of solutions. I couldn't think of the right word there, sorry. There's two sets of solutions to this. The first set is negative eight comma negative seven negative eight and negative seven are consecutive um, and the sum of their squares would equal 113. Or the other set would be positive seven and positive eight, also consecutive and also would have a sum of squares uh, being equal to 113. So there are two, the two numbers are seven and eight or negative seven and negative eight, okay? All right, awesome. So that is it for us for factoring. Uh, tomorrow, we'll continue with uh, an additional method. We're going to go through a few different methods. Okay, but right now, let's concentrate on factoring. Make sure you're really good. Make sure you have zero on one side before you start factoring. Okay, and make sure you connect with me if you have any questions. Take care, guys. We'll see you soon.